proceeding is a message by Reverend Pancras Ngira. We hope you will be blessed. To hear more, subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is Reverend Pancras Ngira. God bless you. I believe God is committed to ensure that every human being on the face of the earth enjoys maximum benefits. From the very book of Genesis chapter number 1, one of the things that God made very clear is that when he blessed Adam and Eve, he commanded them to be fruitful. And that's why in Proverbs chapter number 30, when God is actually speaking through the writer of the book of Proverbs chapter, chapter 30, there's a statement that he makes very clear. He says that there are four things that never get satisfied and one of them is a barren woman. Reason behind it is because barrenness always creates an element of unfruitfulness. So when we are unfruitful in life, we can never be satisfied. When we are productive, we are satisfied. Fruit is an element of increase. The scripture says very clearly when God is speaking in Genesis 1 and verse 28, he says again, and God blessed them. And God commanded them, number one, to be fruitful. Number two, to multiply. Not even to add, to multiply. Multiplication is very different from addition. Every time you look at the Bible, you have to understand that 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. But 3 times 3 is equal to 9. When we deal with multiplication, we go on a higher order of growth. God's desire is that we should multiply. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, increase is coming your way this season. Now, today I want to deal with two things as it relates to the quality seed. I want to talk about the mystery of the seed and what exactly the seed is. The mystery of the seed and what exactly the seed is. There are five mysteries that we observe in the Bible that actually reveal what the seed is. Number one, the first mystery of the seed is that a seed is designed to benefit its possessor. Every seed that we have in life is designed to benefit us. It's designed to benefit the possessor. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 29. Genesis 1 again and verse number 29. I clearly taught us and I say to us that when you look at the Bible in Genesis chapter number 1, you will see three things that God gives man. He gives man, number one, the, uh, an identity. Number two, an inheritance. And number three, verse number 29, the Bible says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. God gave man every herb bearing seed. Look at the way he continues. Which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree uh, in, in the which is fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. So in other words, when God was giving man what we consider as a seed, he gave it to him for his own benefit. How can we discuss deeper about that? When we are talking of the benefit that we receive from the seed, what we are saying is the desired harvest we ever want is hidden in our seed. Seed possesses your harvest. And so what we look at as a seed today is a potential forest in the future. The thing that we have to therefore de I mean, develop within our, uh, uh, what we call our perspective in life is develop the understanding to understand uh, that whatever we ever expect, it is not far from us. Everything we ever desire or expect in life is always with us. Our work is simply to know it and to release it and it will be beneficial to us. Number two, seed is what releases generational answers. Every seed we have releases generational answers. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. When Adam and Eve are sinned against God, in verse number 15, God didn't leave them without an answer. In Genesis 3 and verse number 15, God made available an answer, the Bible says, and God speaking to them, he said, and I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between the seed, your seed, and her seed. Look at what he says. It shall bruise thy, thy head, and thou shalt bruise his, his heel. In other words, God was simply speaking and God was saying the solution for any generational breakthrough is when a seed is available. Please let me make it very clear. Generational battles can come to an end. But you can cure battles when you understand the power of a seed. I'll use an example of what we consider as the tithe. Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 10. What we consider as the tithe. In Malachi 3 and verse number 10, God says, test me in your tithe. And see whether I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing that there is no room enough to contain. Now when you look at Malachi 3 and verse 10, most of us would think that what God is speaking about is releasing blessings or money or benefits in life. But the word blessing there is in singular. What God was suggesting is what he will release will not be things but the power that generates things. 
So we look at Hebrews chapter number 7 and verse number 7. Hebrews 7 verse 7 to verses number 9. Look at what the writer says. He says, and therefore it is clear that the lesser shall be blessed of the greater. So he's very clear. He says, without any contradiction, the less shall be blessed of the better or shall be blessed of the greater. What he's simply trying to explain to us is that the blessing comes from a higher dimension. Something higher always channels the blessing lower. Look at verses number 8 and I want you to consider this in connection. He says, and here men that die receive tithes. But there he received them. Of whom it is witness that he liveth. In other words, every time you pay your tithes, God is the one that receives it in heaven. On earth as pastors, we will receive it and pray for it. But in heaven, God is the one that acknowledges whether it was really you a tithe or not. But that's one of the reasons why I tell people that never give anything that is not a tithe. You may write it on the envelope. It may be recorded in the books of the church. We may pray over it. But if it is not genuinely a tithe, God never receives it in heaven. He says here on earth, dying men or mere men receive it. But in heaven, God is the one that acknowledges this was a tithe. So if, for example, you give 10,000 and God knows your tithe is 50,000, it was not received. It is classified as an offering, not a tithe. I need an amen right there. Can I go deeper? So look at verses number 9 now. Look at what it says in verse 9. And as I, and as I may say, so say, Levi who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Now all of you know very clearly he did not. Look at the next verse so that we can be able to understand. For he was in the, yet in the loins of his father. And when Melchizedek met him. Now remember, Levi never met Melchizedek. All of you know very well, as I've been teaching you oftenly, Levi is simply the child of Jacob. Jacob is a child of Isaac. Isaac is a child of Abraham. The thing is very clear. Genesis chapter number 14 teaches us that when Abraham had come from a winning battle, after he had won the battle, he met Melchizedek and offered him a tithe of all. So that means, in other words, the one that met Melchizedek was Abraham. But look at the way the Bible says, it says, Levi gave it to Melchizedek. So if Levi gave it to Melchizedek while he was in the loins of his father Abraham, the question then is how can that be possible? And the answer is very simple. That the only way a person can release generational blessings is by releasing the tithe. So the tithe, when the Bible says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing, there's no room to contain. God is not just going to answer you now. God will release a transgenerational blessing. I want you to remember in the Bible, scripture will always talk of what we call generational curses. One of the core curses we observe is idolatry and witchcraft. If you read your Bible very carefully in the book of Exodus and Leviticus, the Bible says, and I will pursue the sin of your father and your mother to the third and fourth generation. So that is to say that every time we are dealing with idolatry or witchcraft, it pursues what we call more than three generations. It goes until the fourth generation. We are living in Africa. We have to understand that. In Africa, the greatest battle we have is idolatry and witchcraft. That is the greatest. That is one of the reasons why we are behind. When we compare ourselves with developed nations, you will discover developed nations are far ahead of us. Looking at America, which is 50 years ahead of us, one of the main foundations is because their founding fathers had founded the nation on God himself. And it is even now that people are actually saying, when you look at the new note or the new currency of Kenya, you will discover it has not yet been dedicated. Some people create an argument and they say, the old Kenya note was dedicated to devils. And that is one of the reasons why we were not able to go far. I've had two people calling me and asking me, Pastor, why shouldn't we dedicate the Kenya notes? And I think we will do so. But the point that I want you to understand is this, is that when you look at America, they are way ahead because they founded their nation on God. So they are like 50 years, people like George Washington, Washington were born again. People like Abraham Lincoln were people that knew and feared God. All these fellows founded a nation on God. That is why a nation that acknowledges God will automatically go very far. Remember, Proverbs chapter number 14. Sin is a reproach to any man, but righteousness exalted a nation. When you acknowledge God, you are exalted. When you disregard God, you are always brought lower. So I want you to observe this very clearly. If iniquity on the basis of witchcraft and idolatry can go to the third and fourth generation, listen very carefully, then that is to say that it is possible to break it when we become titus. One of the core 
influence or manifestation of witchcraft is a spirit of failure and poverty. Anytime you see elements of failure, elements of poverty following generations, where no one in a bloodline is ever rising beyond a certain level. I mean, people can't go to university. People can't even finish their school. The children are always struggling financially. If you look at a family and you're always realizing there's a lot of financial struggle, you must learn that there's some element of witchcraft pursuing that family. Now, I know in Christ, when we come into Christ, we are immediately out of the class. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13 and 14. Are we all in agreement today? If you hear me say, I hear you. Shout it louder, say again, I hear you. Galatians 3 and verse 13 says very clearly, Christ became a curse. Do you remember that scripture? Because cast is a man that hung it on a tree. So automatically when we come to Jesus, the curse is removed from us. But I want you to understand Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14, 13 and 14 does not talk of a generational blessing. It talks of a singular blessing. In other words, when you as a believer get born again, you are no longer cast as an individual. But the element of a bloodline curse can follow your children. So to break it, we have to study means and ways to create generational foundations. And one of them is Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10. When the Bible says, and test me to see whether I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing. God knows he wants to transfer blessings that will wipe away the shame from the third and fourth generation. Listen to me, tithing does not just secure you today. Tithing secures your children, your children's children. Your children's children's children. Tithing travels into the future of your children. You, you, you need to shout a better amen right here. So that is to say the struggles you had are wiped away. Oh, your amen needs to be better. The hassles you had are wiped away. The financial issues in your family, where there was a lot of financial heaviness, whenever you tithe, generational battles are settled. So in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, God says very well that the seed of the woman will have a battle with the seed of the serpent. If your seed will win, you must empower your seed. So number two mystery of the seed, the seed will always answer generational battles. I pray for somebody here that the battles in your bloodline will come to an end here today. Oh, your amen needs help. I say the battles in your bloodline will come to an end here today. I don't know about you, but when you are saying amen, you must understand where you are coming from. Look at some of you, the struggles you have had. Look at the hassles you have had. Look at how many things have been disturbing your settlement. One reason why you need to pray harder is because generations must be delivered. Number three, the third mystery of the seed is every seed has its own body. Every seed has its own body. First Corinthians chapter number 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verses number 38. Every seed has its own body. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 38. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Every seed carries its own body. That is one reason why if you plant beans, you can never expect it to come out as maize. If you plant maize, never expect it to come out as green grams. Every seed possesses its own body. The word body there means its own value, its own nature. Every time you have a seed, your seed has its own body. It can generate according to the body it has. Beloved, I want to submit to you that God has a harvest for you, but you must understand the body of your seed. What form does your seed take? Oh, come on, word of light. Are you hearing me? What form does your seed take? If your, if your seed cannot have a body, then it cannot generate whatever it desires. Now let me explain this and I want you to understand. The Bible consistently would give us terminologies like seed because in the Old Testament, all of it was actually an agrarian type of community. So consistently, the only way I could be able to explain to people, or rather God, could be able to explain to people about the aspect of sowing was to use a seed. That's one of the most classic examples we could ever find in life. Now you must understand that God knows that there is a harvest type that you want. If the harvest type that you want is in this order, you must look for a seed that has a body of the harvest you want. Sometimes I look at believers and I laugh when you're believing God to be able to get something that is on the class of a million and you're playing with a seed that does not look like the million you're actually looking for. The reality, it does not come in life. You argue with your destiny or your future equivalent to where you are today. Listen, the Bible says he that is faithful in little is not will be is faithful in much. God knows 
that any time you need a husband, you must have the body of a wife. God knows any time you need a wife, you must have the body of a husband. Your Bible records very clear in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 21. The scripture is very clear. And if you read it, it says, Whosoever find, verse 22 rather, Whosoever findeth a wife, not a girlfriend. So that is to say, one of the ways that you find what is actually like you is that you must look like that thing. Oh, now you're getting me. Are you understanding me? If you don't look like the future or the expectation you have, it cannot recognize you. Every harvest around you recognizes you according to the identity you take. If you do not take the identity of the harvest that is to come to you, it will never come to where you are. So one of the things that the enemy will keep on doing, he will make you never to recognize that your seed carries a body. Listen to me. A young man had gone for an interview. When he arrived like this, there is a way he talked. And by the time he cleared talking, the person who was listening to him looked at him and said, you know what, we are giving you the managerial position. And it has nothing to do with your papers. This is how the story goes. The answer was, we are giving you the position because your demeanor and your explanation and your way of command of words looks like a manager. Your harvest is attracted to the body you have. Every seed has a body. Oh, you need to shout a better amen right here. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm preparing for a brighter future. Look at the other one, give them a high five again. Tell them, neighbor, my harvest is about to recognize me. So in Matthew chapter number one, when the angel appears to Mary, the, the angel tells Mary, who was 16 years of age, that listen, you will bear a child. That same angel has to appear to Joseph. And when the angel appears to Joseph, listen to the words. The angel tells Joseph, do not leave your wife. How can you talk about a 16-year-old kid like a wife? Because your harvest recognizes your nature. Oh, I pray for somebody here that you will begin to clothe your seed. Do your business like a large company. Present yourself like a CEO. Don't be dressing like somebody who is broke and expect somebody to bless you with good money. It can never happen. If I see like you are always dressing up like somebody who is wealthy, there is a way I would reconsider if I was to give you 50 shillings. The somewhat many believers do not attract what is this. Listen to me. You only draw what is yours when you have put a cloth on your seat. Did you ever know people that argue attract people that argue? People that are gentle, even if you have an arguing type of mentality, if you approach a gentle person, you have to come down. Because their nature, always, no wonder Jesus says, bless them that curse you because the blessing is superior to a curse. Love them that hate you because love is superior than hate. Oh, now you're getting, you need to shout a better amen right there. So that means gentleness is superior than people that are aggressive. That is to say, in other words, that every time I notice I have warfare all around me, people are hating me, I'm hating people. It means there's a nature in me. The seed I carry is a seed of strife. But if I notice that I come into a place of strife, but people all of a sudden change their attitude, it means the seed I carry, the nature is gentle. It commands everything to be gentle around me. Listen to me. Don't demonize everything. Some things respond to you because of the quality of seed you have. Some things don't argue with your boss. Oh, you always pay me late. Oh, I don't like the way you handle me. There is possibility that your seed does not have the right clothing. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Slap three of your neighbors and tell your neighbor, neighbor, that's why your seed needs a new garment. <laughs> uh -uh, that one doesn't talk to you. Slap another one. Tell them again, neighbor, that's why your seed needs a right garment. How can a lady only attract married people? That everyone that ever comes to propose to you is a married person. How can you attract unbelievers all throughout your life? That everyone that ever proposes to you is that there is something about the seed in you. It has a garment that attracts the wrong people. But the moment you have the right seed with the right body on it, you will attract the right person. I'm telling you the truth. Don't ever lie to me that we are all tempted with lust. James chapter number three. Chapter number one. Hola, 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 hola. Amen. James chapter number one. If you're there, you can say amen. If you're not there, say I'm coming. Verses number 13. Look at what the Bible says. James 1, 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Verse number 14. 
But every man that is tempted, when he is drawn away, of what? Shout it louder. Of what? So which means every time temptation comes to you, it responds to something in you. Temptation smells something. It can smell fishiness in you. Temptation will just smell. This guy likes women. So it will always plant around you the women that you like. Temptation knows you have a weakness when it comes to money. And so it will always plant around you issues to do with money. Oh no, I know I will keep on talking. Temptation knows you have an anger problem. So it will put somebody around you to make you angry. And it will feed that area. <laughs> hola, hola. Hola, 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 hola. <laughs> Listen to that. Every man is tempted, drawn away by the lust in them. So that means that everything, most of the things that happen to me, there must be something in me that makes the reality come to my life. So which means if I'm to change that, I can change the seed on the inside. Oh no, you can help me shout a better amen. If you look at my kids, they look like me. Whether it's the ears, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Whether it's something about, there is always something around heart, fruitful, or near that looks like the father. In the same way you reproduce who you are. I pray for somebody here in the name of Jesus. You will not generate wrong results. I said again, you will not generate wrong results. I know your amen is to be louder. You will not generate wrong results. Lift up your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I pray for myself that my seed will have the right body. Anybody around my seed that is ungodly, that attracts what is wrong, say, I remove that body. I remove that garment right now in the name of Jesus. Say, I clothe my seed to attract favor, to attract increase, to attract peace, to attract blessing, to attract gentleness. Say it with the forehead, say again, in the name of Jesus, whatever is around my seed that is not of God, I remove it now. Or you can say it louder, I remove it now. I remove it now. You will not attract failure. You will not attract defeat. You will not attract loss. Say, I command you, my seed. Attract success. Attract victory. Attract the blessing. Attract gentleness. If you believe in, let me see somebody clap to God with a clap right here. Every seed has a body. Number four, every seed responds to the value that you give it. Every seed responds to the value that you give it. That is to say that if you don't value the seed you have, it cannot grow. If you value it, it will grow. The quicker you value what you have, the quicker you can go. One man of God was giving his story. And he said he wanted to be invited. He's a fine teacher of the word. His name is Sam Adiemi. At a time in his ministry, no one was inviting him. He knelt, he cried before God. He said, Lord, I know they usually pray to ask you who are the people that should come and preach in their conferences. And I'm asking you, if they hear you, you can hear me. Talk to them and tell them to invite me. He says, none of them was inviting him. And God told him, I want you to create your own platform. I want you to go on radio. The guy began to go on radio. He said the first time he began a program on radio, even the president of the nation got to hear the program and demanded that they repeat the program more than twice that week. He said that is how the doors of the man began to open. You must recognize the problem with many people is we despise what we have. No, you need to help me say amen. We devalue it. The woman saw a jar of oil and it was too small. She never thought it could be able to work. Listen to me. No matter how small it is, it has the potential to mature. Learn to value it. I will say this again. Virtue can be drawn where value is enhanced. I've been to places when I stood up to preach. I don't need to do much. The hunger in the people, the yearning in the people is too much. When they place value on me, it is natural. The breakthrough comes out. And that is one of the reasons why you must learn. Look at your seed and tell it I value you. I don't devalue you. I value my voice. A person was giving a story and he said, you might be shocked that even your smile alone can make you a millionaire. Value your seed. I said again, value your seed. The next point, every seed must fall and die to produce. Every seed must fall and die to produce. That's a mystery. John chapter number 12 and verse number 24. John 12 and verses number 24. Jesus says, unless a seed falls, Sometimes when you feel like you're falling, it is not failure. Some of those times, your seed 
is actually being released. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall. Are you feeling like you're falling? Yeah, let your seed fall. <laughs> let it fall. Did I hear an amen right there? Let it fall. Are you feeling like some things are going under? Listen, let it fall. He says, unless it falls and dies. Who amongst us here likes dying? No one. No one likes pain. But let me tell you the truth. Pain is the only way into delivery of any miracle. There is no other way. Sometimes in the point when you feel the worst, that is when you are in the process of pushing out your best result. You cannot love your wife without having argued with her a little. There must be a small, small argument. And then after that, you create a culture of saying both of us don't want pain. We want to love each other. But if from the very beginning that you loved each other, you smiled at each other, that we can never argue, you are living a lie. Both of you are actors. You came from Hollywood or Hollywood. You need help. It's a lie. The amen is now disappearing. Can you look at your neighbor telling about the realities we have to talk? There are things that we have to understand unless it falls. If you are feeling like you are falling, I came with a word for you. <laughs> You are about to manifest. If you are feeling like nothing is working, I have a word for you. Your seed is dying. Let it die. Let it die because in death shall life appear. You will not die there forever. John chapter number 11. Look at John 11. <laughs> Somebody here, I know you feel like you are actually falling. And you are in the process of dying. I advise you, don't collect yourself from the operation table. Just die. Let him resurrect you. Did I hear an amen? John 11 verse 1. Come on, can I hear a better amen right there? Yeah, let, let, let it just fall. Let your seed fall. Don't think of it twice. Let it fall. God is the one who will do the resurrection business. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus. Of Bethany, of the town of Mary and her sister Martha. We continue. It was a Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. You know, very powerful introduction. I like the way the Bible explains. Are you understanding me? And wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Let's continue. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, thou whom lovest is what? Please say it louder. Is what? Say it like you are in charge. Is what again? Say it one more time. Is what again? Okay, let's move ahead. When Jesus heard that, that he said, this sickness is not what? Please say it like you believe it. It is not what? But for uh -huh, that the Son of Man might do what? You won't die. Physically, according to the eyes of men, you are dying. But in the spiritual, you are producing life. Did you hear what I just said? Physically, when we look at you, we know you are dying. We say, oh my God, what is she? You could buy it. But in the spirit, God knows I am doing something. So one preacher once explained. He said that it was necessary for Lazarus to die because God wanted the disease to die together with him. The preacher went ahead to explain so that when Jesus came to command Lazarus to come back to life, the disease was not called. Only Lazarus came back to life. Some of you must understand that there are things in you God is killing. A person once sang a song and I will... Put the blood of Jesus on that song, killing me softly. Let God just kill you softly in the precious name of Jesus. James chapter number one. I know I'm talking to somebody here. Let it fall. Let it die. It will produce. There is a result you can never get unless you are in death. James chapter number one and verse number two. Lord, my friends, God is growing something in you. It's a mystery. Unless a seed falls any great result I was watching a clip and the clip made me laugh when they were showing how men who were together with their wives in the delivery room what would happen to them so I saw the first one who was holding the wife of the hand and the doctors are surrounding and they are telling the wife push and the man is looking then all of a sudden the man begins to I mean look like he's wobbling then all of a sudden he fell and fainted the doctors had to forget the woman for a while resuscitate the man and then come back to the woman and chase the man away because what he looked at was death Giving birth is death. Any one of you who has ever gone to a delivery room, you will learn to value your wife. You can never play with them. You can never see a woman bring forth a human being and then slap her. It's impossible. The moment you say, hey. one, Pastor Gideon, so the wife pushed. The first thing he did was this. And then he moved aside. The baby came out. They even gave it to the wife. The guy was still in the corner, squeezing himself. He could not believe what just happened. Everyone is celebrating. He's quiet. The father of the child is like this. He's wondering what just happened to this person. And listen to me. That's how some of us are. <laughs> God will help you in Jesus' name. 
Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God will help you. James 1 verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Look at the coming verse. Look at the next verse. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh. So something is working. Work at patience. Look at the next verse and we close with this. But let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect. And what? Shout it louder. And what? Wanting what? So there's a place you reach where you will never want anything. There's a dimension you enter, you never pray for money again. There's a dimension you enter, you will never pray for joy again. There's a dimension you enter, you will never pray again, deliver us from argument. There's a dimension you enter, there are things you will never want. Because he has been working on you. Listen to me, not everyone till today is asking God for money. There are people who are looking for opportunities to give. There are guys who are looking for opportunities to give. When Ted Turner gave out his first one million dollars, the moment he gave out one million dollars uh, uh, to the United Nations, they called him and asked him, why did you give away the money? Ted Turner looked at them. He said, when you make more than you can spend, what remains is to give. There's a level you enter. You don't want anything. No, you need to shout amen. There's a place you enter. There are prayers you will never pray. Lift your right hand. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, I want that dimension. Say it like you believe it. Say again, Lord, I want that dimension. The next point, the fourth, the fifth mystery of the seed. Every seed has time attached to it. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. Every seed has time attached to it. Every seed. You must know when to release your seed. The greatest battle of many people is not just the ability to know. But the ability to know the season and the time. The Bible says while the earth remained. I want you to look at that scripture. This is King James. Look at what it says. While the earth remained. Can you see that? What does it say? Come on look at that. What does it say? Alright stop there. I want you to look at that word again seed. Is the word seed time combined together? Now many preachers do a mistake. They say there is seed. There is time. And then there is harvest. I want you to listen carefully. You must know the time to see it. The harvest has no time. Let me try it again. You must know the time to see it. But for the harvest, there is no time. So when preachers try to divide it more in and they say, there is seed, there is time, and there is a problem there. God never said seed, comma, time, and harvest. God did not say so. God said seed time. So that means I must know my timing of seeding. When I know it, I can govern my harvest. Every seed has time attached to it. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's a mystery. And you have to pray, Mr. Malo, to know when to release it. If you do not know when to release your seed, you might end up losing your moment of big breakthrough. It's just like what they say. Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 1. It's like what they say. They say that a woman can become pregnant always. All of us understand that. There are periods of ovulation. That means, in other words, that there is a right time for a woman to become pregnant. One person began to argue. And he began to say, do you know you can actually master how to produce boy children? And the person said to the other one who was asking, how can you say so? I thought God is the one that determined. He said, no, you can determine how to produce boy children. Then he went to science and he began to explain. He was talking about the X and the Y chromosome. Most of you do know that. He explained how the chromosome that controls, controls the male factor is always very weak. And how it dies quicker. And how the feminine one can survive. And so he told people that if you read your Bible, for example, when you look at people like Jacob in the Bible, you will discover that Jacob was able to produce boys apart from one girl because of how they consistently handle themselves, even sexually. So he says this. He says, for example, if a man stays three days, I want to explain something, take all things pure. Three days, the husband stays three days withholding himself. He says that there is a generation where the X chromosome becomes stronger. That by the time they come together with the wife, the possibilities of generating a boy child is higher than just a girl child. So then he said, because the Y chromosome, which is a girl, is it? Am I correct? Is Y girl? Huh? Which one is girl? Which one is boy? X is which one? Uh -huh. Boy is? Okay, so the X chromosome. <laughs> so the X chromosome is consistently alive. Are you understanding me? It is alive, but it can be overpowered when the man understands time. Now look at this. Cast thy bread upon thy waters. For thou shalt find it after what? Say it louder. After what? Verse number two. Let's keep on reading. Give what? I need you guys to read with me. Give what? 
A portion to seven and also to what? For thou what? Okay, let's read the next verse again. If what? Uh-huh. 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 Okay, let's keep on reading. I want you to get the concept. Look at verse number one. Look at that one. What does it say? He? Uh-huh. And he that does what? So that means if I look at nature to determine my time, I will miss God. But if I know my seed has its own time, I will generate what I desire. I hear God telling me that most of us, we have entered a time to seed. You need to seed more than ever before in this period. So now what is a seed? Now let's go there. What is a seed? I'm just teaching today and I want you to get the points. If you're writing, you're even more advantaged. What is a seed? Number one, a seed is a prophetic vision. A seed is a prophetic vision. So in Mark chapter number 4, when Jesus is saying, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? He says, I shall compare it to a master seed. What he's explaining is the kingdom of God is like a prophetic vision. So the first thing you must learn is that the first seed which is in your hands is a vision that God shows to you. Please, I want to explain something. Look, look at me. Listen very carefully here. Life is about what you see. Life is about what you see. No one becomes a doctor without having seen doctors. No one becomes an engineer without having seen engineers. No one becomes a pastor without having seen a pastor. There is something you saw that you desired and you became. The moment you have the seed of vision, automatically you gravitate towards it. In your hands, first seed is a prophetic vision. I wish I had an amen right there. And that is one of the reasons why before you look at your money, look at what you see. Look at the vision that God has called you to have. When in Habakkuk chapter number one, there was a problem and the unrighteous was prospering and the righteous was wallowing in problem and Habakkuk cried out to God in verse five, God tells Habakkuk, I will do a thing in your days and the ear that will hear shall tingle. Verse number chapter two and verse one, God now begins to give the answer to a generational question. He says, I will wait at the ramparts to see, to see what he will say unto me. And I heard the Lord say, verse number two, write down the vision. In other words, Habakkuk cook. The solution is not hard work. The solution is not in strategic work. The solution begins with a vision. I see myself on the next level. I see myself international. I see myself flying to the nations. I see myself as a manager. I see myself owning my own company. I see myself doing better business. That is the first seed I have. The seed is what I see. Listen to me, you work to an increase you are aware of. Not an increase you hope to get. <laughs> if your marriage will have peace, your marriage does not have peace because you only wanted it to have peace. You know, one of the things I've been learning, and I've been sharing this with couples, every time I keep on saying the greatest mistake we do, even us, as we sit down to do counseling, is that we keep on telling people how to handle conflict, which is good. There must be mechanisms. But you don't know, if the only thing I do is to teach you how to handle things and I don't give you the perfect image of what you should have, you will maintain management in life and never progression. If you see the perfect picture, you will hate where you are. I mean, when you see how you and your wife, every time you agree, things are working, you cannot disagree. Shabaya. <laughs> Are you still here? When you see how on the next level it is good to be wealthy, you will never want to be poor. One reason why some people always argue, they say, oh, these pastors are preaching about money is because they are broke. Did you ever know rich people usually want to hear more about money? If every day you get angry, whenever you hear, even when somebody is talking about money, let us give. If you're getting angry, you don't see the next level. You are not. But there's something in you that can make you angry that every time you hear, you want to give. Even if it's not money, I give myself. Lord, if I can enter the offering basket, I will enter. Receive me. Receive me. No, I need an amen right here. A lady attended a meeting when she was there. When the pastor began to speak, the lady had no money. The thing that she did was strange. She shaved her hair. Came and put it there. I said, man of God, I don't have any money. But I need God to start answering me. Put the hair there. And said, the money will follow me. And I'm going to where my dream is. What do you see? I see you on your next level. Uh -uh, I said again, I see you on your next level. That 
seed is a prophetic vision. That seed number two is the revelation you have of your future. Oh my God, I feel like preaching right here. The revelation you have of your future. That is what will make you come to church early. Have a praise like never before. That is what will make you wake up early in the morning at 5 or 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock. And you will begin to pray. You are not praying just because you have issues or problems. You are praying because you are pregnant. A revelation is full in your spirit. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost are right here. Whenever you see it, you want it. Before we ever got hurt, even before we married, we sat down with our, my wife and we talked. And our discussion was very clear. And we were talking about how many children we want. We said three. Number two, we also discussed about after how long should we begin to talk to get children. We said after two years. And number three, we discussed again, we added, we said what distance should be between our children? Three years. Now let me ask you, which fool discusses about that and you don't know whether you have health problems or whether you can get children or not? That discussion is fake because you believe it. So I didn't need to go to the doctor and do a checkup to confirm. I had faith. My vision told me you will get children. That is one reason why no matter what report you hear, you believe what you know. Oh no, you need to shout amen right there. You believe what you know, that I know God will bless me with this. So the moment we were actually agreeing with my wife, we did the first year. We did the second year. By the time she actually became pregnant, at that time when she was delivering, one pastor friend of mine came and called me aside, Pastor Enoch Buruti. He told me, Pancras, you know, let me just confess that even today as I've come to celebrate with you that you've gotten a child, let me be very honest, when I saw you and your wife the first year going ahead and your wife was not getting a child, I began to get worried. When you did the second year, I was even worried. When I saw she was pregnant, I was at peace. I knew this is a typical African man. He told me, body, Pancras, we usually, every time we cancel couples, we tell them when you're just married, get children. I don't encourage that. I encourage people when you're married, enjoy marriage for a while. So by the time he told me that mini kama mbianga mini mbianga hatu tulia nini. And that's one thing that I wanted to understand. And then we went ahead. I'm giving this testimony for somebody here. We went ahead. We had agreed three years separation. So a heart appeared. And then three years after fruitful appeared. When fruitful appeared with the condition she had. We were both discouraged. As we continued on. By the time the first and one and a half years passed by. By the second year. My wife told me very clearly. The way things are going. I would rather we forget getting any other children. Let's put effort on fruitful and hard. God takes vows very clearly. He remembered the words we said. And so while we are believing that now we are focusing on fruity. That's how we call her. Bam! All of a sudden my wife discovers her peas have disappeared for two months. She comes and tells me, you know what? I just discovered something is not correct. I said, what is it? She said, I'm just discovering something is not correct. I said, what is it? I'm just discovering something is not correct. You know, women can say things and you're wondering what are they saying. And so she went ahead and did a check. When she did a check, she said, I'm pregnant. And she was angry. <laughs> angry that she was pregnant. She said, I'm pregnant again. And that time she's saying that, I'm looking. I said, but no, we should be happy. She said, no. I'm wondering, kwani ni tokea juu ulifanya nini that's what she asked. Na msimwambie, ulifanya nini? Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? And that time I'm telling her no, we did everything possible to protect ourselves and we said we are not getting another one. But God is God. If you saw it, you must have it. Chai, I wish I had an amen right here. When Nia was born, listen carefully. Heart was January. Fruitful 3 years after February. Nia 3 years after May. God answered what we saw. No matter what wahala you are seeing now, create a picture of the future you want. I'm prophesying to somebody here, may you have a revelation of the future. In fact, write it down somewhere. Put it on the wall of your bedroom. Remind yourself you are the seed I am looking forward for. I'm coming out of poverty, I see a CEO. You are the harvest of the company I desire. I will dress like the future. Oh, come on, you need a louder amen right here. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I have a revelation of my future. Look at the other one, give them a high five, tell them again, neighbor, I can see it. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12, we are about to finish. And we are going to pray for that seed, that seed will produce. Every time I call some of the people here, like sometimes when I would call Mr. Nicholas, he can tell you this, and it's a consistent factor I would do many times. I would say CEO, he would say amen. 
As a poverty remover, he says amen. And another the time I'm prophesying, I feel like Rono is about to stand up. I say solution giver of Kenya, he says amen. In other words, what am I doing? I'm declaring where he's going. By revelation, I see multi-millionaires here. By revelation, I see families rising higher. By revelation, I see nations affected by you. By revelation, I see CEOs of companies here. By revelation, I see children coming out of this congregation. If you believe, you lift your hands and shout a louder hallelujah right here. So I refuse to labor on prayer with the outside. I will see it, then I will pray. No wonder the Bible says, test and see. So the moment I test God, I will see God. Kadasa, Obanda, Legada. Hey, somebody here, you're coming out of the issues right now. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I can see, I can see. Look at the other one, even if they are not happy, slap them until they become happy. Tell them neighbor, I can see it. I see my future. Michael knew that together with the wife, they were here. They gave you the testimony when Michael was here. Michael never told you one Sunday when I was preaching like I'm preaching now. And by the way, we were doing a 21 day fasting. Mrs. Mugai was there. Pastor Gideon was there. I think Margaret, you were also there. I, we were doing a 21 day fasting. And I preached that day on establishment. The moment it was from the book of Philippians. The moment I finished, Mike came to me. You know Mike, you saw him. He's just talkative like he is. He came and he sat down with me. He told me, Pastor, when you preached, I saw Shama. The first time I met Mike, he was brought to me by his wife. I preached to the wife who was in university those several years. So they used to go to deliverance church. And that time, when they were in a challenge of children, the wife started introducing him to me. I was almost about to leave for South Africa. So I did the first prayer. She conceived. And when I went to South Africa, let me tell you, when God uses you, you feel very happy. You even arrive in a nation. You say, in the name of Jesus, every problem here, lie now. Devil, God, die. Then all of a sudden, I received the next report. She lost it. My heart was broken. I prayed again when I came back. She conceived again. It stayed for like two months. She lost it again. I wondered, which demon is this? Thank God the sister came and encouraged her. And said, at least the problem is not barrenness. We have confirmed you can conceive. What we just need to do is to believe God, it becomes permanent. She conceived at that time, she lost it. And then one day we had a Nigerian pastor who came to preach. When he preached, his name was uh, the one who taught us Aka Marama. The tall Nigerian guy. Do you remember him? TK Amakri. TK came and he preached. Then, bam, he moved in the prophetic. He walked in the congregation, looked at Gloria, and told Gloria. There's something that God wants to deal with, but your pastor must come to the house. When he will come, he never mentioned, because I, but I could tell God is speaking. Then it went one month. He had gone, two months he had gone. Then one day we are having an evening service. When we had the evening service, they were not even there. I felt the Holy Ghost sit on me. And I had God telling me, go to their house and release a breakthrough. I called Innocent Anyoni. One of the sons I used to have. He drove me all the way to Kimumu. We went into the house of Mike and Gloria. As we walked in, I lifted up my hands. I told them, kneel down. Today there's a breakthrough. I made one prayer and I left. And I told them it is sealed. Two months after, Gloria discovered she's pregnant. The first word she tells me, Pastor, please don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. I might lose it again. I told her not this time. God will finish this matter. They were in the process of preparing to fly to go to Australia. Listen to me. Mike, several months ago, had said, I saw Shama. He believed it was a boy. Today, they have the firstborn, a boy called Shama. They have a secondborn boy again. Listen, God answers prayer. No matter your surroundings, see higher than what you see. Let your legs be on earth, but your head in heaven. I, I wish I had somebody to preach together with me right here. The Bible says that this light affliction cannot compare to the weight of glory, Mr. Toka, that is about to appear. That though our outward man, wherever away, every day I may feel discouraged. I may feel low. I may feel broken. My outward man is wearing down. Yet my inner man is being rebuilt. In other words, Satan, whenever you hit me, God is making me. When you hit me, God is making me. No wonder you will rebound like a tennis ball. Look at you. Look at you. Maybe one day ago you were so discouraged. What made you rise up again to come to church? Maybe two days ago you said I will leave Jesus. What made you rise again to pray again? It's called the inner man. That is why you can never fail. You shall rise again. I want you to be radical. One
one more time don't give your neighbor any space don't give them a high five slap them by faith tell the neighbor you are about to see it come to pass ah, come on come on come on slap your neighbor for me with some laughter tell the neighbor you are about to see it come to pass if you believe it shout aloud hallelujah right here jeremiah verse 1 chapter 1 verse 12 then he said unto me now let's go to verse 11 first of all oh you will see that is your seed your seed is your vision mr edwin every time i give an offering i don't just give to one to be rich i'm giving for it to respond to my future because not every riches is for everyone for example how many of you here give for dollars if you always give with dollars in mind lift your hand that's what i meant not every one of you is sowing with dollars in mind you're all sowing probably with kenyan shillings so only the one that saw dollars pastor gideon will be giving and they will say lord i'm asking you give me green money I know I've upgraded your vision right now. Some of you, even when you're giving, you're only giving probably to pay rent. Lord, I ask you as I saw today, please clear my house. There's another one who is giving. This is why they're giving. As they're giving, they're saying, Lord, enlarge my business capacity. It depends with what you see. Then there's another category. They're just giving. And disappear. I refuse. I'll be intentional. My life is, when I come to church, I'm intentional. Yes, I'm saying I'm intentional. When I walk into the house of God, I'm intentional. When I give, I'm intentional. When I pray, I'm intentional. When I wake up in the morning, I'm intentional. Everything I do, I'm intentional. Now, let's read this scripture, then we do a prayer right now. Are you ready? If you're ready, shout, I am ready. So, let's take it together. One, two, go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, verse 12, then. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I will hasten. The moment you see, he says he will speed up. Stand up on your feet. Let's make a prayer right now. I want you to stretch both hands like you have something in your hands. We're about to pray. Stretch them like this. Now, let me say this. What is in your hand is your dream. Before we do the prayer, I want you to envision what you are thinking of in terms of your future. Your ministry, your business, your family deliverance. Can you envision it just for a minute? Just envision it. Envision it. Envision it. I want you to envision. Envision the financial dimension, the children you are expecting. Envision the houses you will build. Envision the way you will settle. I want you to envision. You don't pray because of problems today. You are praying because of that vision. Come on, envision it for a minute. Just envision it. Now, I want you to take the second moment. Begin to pray for that thing you see. And don't lift your hands like it's as though they are discouraged. Lift them with joy. You're praying for your vision. Take a minute. Open your mouth. Begin to pray for it. Stretch your hands. Stretch it. Speak to your hands. That thing in your hands is powerful. Pray for it. Pray for that expectation. Can you do that right now? Pray for that expectation. Pray for that expectation. Pray for it. Pray for it. Pray for it. Pray for it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, look at me, all of you. I want to say some few things because of time, I'm limited. There are four things that the revelation of your future does. Number one, it gathers what is yours. Number two, it releases what is yours. Number three, it delivers what is yours. And number four, it establishes what is yours. Did you hear what I just said? I want us to do the first two. We will command a gathering. Is that okay? Now lift your hands towards heaven. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree over the seed in my hands, the prophetic vision, the revelation of my future that I see right now. I decree now in the name of Jesus, gather your harvest, gather your harvest, gather your harvest. May your helpers gather, your opportunities gather, your resources gather. I command you now, gather, 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 gather. I want you to open your mouth right now. Command what is supposed to gather together. Command everything that is to gather to begin to gather in the name of
of Jesus. Command it to begin to gather in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth right now. Begin to declare. Lord, let clients gather to this vision. Let helpers gather to this vision. Let people that will take it higher gather to this vision. Let them gather. Let them gather opportunities. Gather to help this vision. I command everything that should make this prophetic revelation become a reality. Begin to gather in the name of Jesus. Begin to gather in the name of Jesus. Every help I require. Gather in the name of Jesus. Gather in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth that music in here that career you carry that dream you possess that child in your life that business destiny i want you to command a gathering right now command a gathering in the name of jesus name lift up your hands one more time remember the seed you do not value cannot generate virtue i want you to value that thing lift up your hands towards heaven do it with confidence now listen don't play with this moment because that prophetic revelation will open up doors you have never seen say in the name of jesus i declare now that the seed in my hand releases my life into the next level it releases my opportunities it releases my favor. It releases my blessing. It releases my harvest. Say in the name of Jesus. Because of what is in my hand. I decree a release. I want you to open your mouth right now. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. Command a release. A release that is equivalent to the dream in your hands. Command it in the name of Jesus. 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 A release. Come on somebody, release it now. I command you to release my healing. To release my health. To release long life. To release victory. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands one more time. Every seed that is prophetic attracts uncommon battles. War will come, but that same seed has generational answers. It wins generational battles. Say, in the name of Jesus, I have come to Mount Zion. Say with authority, I have come to Mount Zion. Where there is deliverance and holiness. Say, I command the spirit of deliverance to come over my seed. To help my seed. Say, I declare, the enemy will not win this battle. The enemy will not win this battle. In the name of Jesus. Say, I release deliverance over my seed. Satan! I rebuke you now. Get out of my seed. Leave my seed. I command you go. I want you to open your mouth to warfare. Do war against anything that will fight against your seed. Do war in the name of Jesus. War right now. Opposition that is lifted. I want you to do warfare in the name of Jesus. Powers that are fighting your breakthrough. Shage kata. Yepelebe katalaba. Leketelebe kata. Yepre de 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 de. Come on somebody open your mouth. Do all. Shage gada. Ye gandalaba. Ye bre de 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 de. Leave my business. Leave it. I call the spirit of deliverance. Leave my ministry. Leave it in the name of Jesus. Leave my career. Leave it in the name of Jesus. Shade de 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 de. Ye mandele ketelebe. Ye ketelebe. Come on, can I get warriors? At this moment of prayer, you don't pray quietly. Pray with authority. Pray with authority. Come 
Maria Madra, La Gante de Bay, La Tate de Bay, Yet de Bay, Yaga Gaga, Yet de Bay, La Brete de Tete, Yakeke, Yapatata, Yet de Bay, Yatelele Bay, Yokeke, Yatana Tete de Bay. In Jesus' name, let's take another prayer. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my seed has a body. A body that is recognized in the spiritual and in the natural. I declare now, all my helpers, that should recognize the seed I have. I command you now, gather, 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 gather. I want you to command your seed to receive a garment. Command it to receive a garment of favor. Command your seed to receive garment of blessing today. Command it in the name of Jesus. Come on, let me hear somebody lift up a prayer. Let me hear somebody lift up a prayer. Jameta, ye ganda laba, ye pre de 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 de, ye da 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 di da da bo dika, ye de 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 katala, je be te le be katala, rama te le be ka, je be le le be, la ka di le be sha, ye da 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 ba do shia, le ganda la bo shike, ra de 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 de, re ke 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 ke, ye ke 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 ke. Jabe kalaba ye gaga dida roge gegege loge gegege ya de 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 robe de 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 ya gaga gaga ye de 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 ya de 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 ya be da da ya Thank you Lord Jesus You will pray with two people you will begin with the first one quickly hold their hands wherever they are in the name of Jesus get a partner for yourself we need most for your prayer I want you as you hold their hand, sow a seed of prayer in their life. Remember, seed has time. Seed has time. I want you right now to use this as a moment to sow seed. Can you go ahead? Pray for your neighbor's seed to prosper. Let that be a sowing of a seed from you. Open your mouth and do so. In the name of Jesus. Now move to another person. Hold their hands. I want you to do the second prayer. Look for another one. Every seed according to the mystery we have learned has the benefits of our future. I want you to pray that desire the harvest will become a reality to your neighbor. Pray for them that they will begin to see the increase. Pray for them that they will begin to see the increase. Pray for them that they will begin. God will answer their prayers. God will answer their prayers. God will answer their prayers. Come on somebody open your mouth and pray. God answer, oh Lord, we are calling on you in the name of Jesus. Mandela Gaza, yete kekeke, yabre de 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 kashara. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Now, would you lift your hands, prophesy to the things you see? I want you to declare in this season of increase, command those things to be a reality. Listen to me, I know what I'm saying. The enemy cannot hold back what is yours. Command these things. Command these things right now. Command them. Call the things that be not as though they were. Call that business. Call that financial favor. worship him for one minute today has been an interesting sunday but let the rains of god come afresh just if you can speak in tongues speak in tongues if you cannot just speak in any other language 
I, I want you to cultivate an atmosphere for your life, your future, your marriage. Cultivate it. Cultivate it. Hey! 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 Abosh! been an interesting Sunday. Satan will not win over you. It is the Lord that rejoices over you. I declare depression will not hold you down. Discouragement will not hold you down. You are rebounding again. You are rising 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 again. I command a restoration period. I command a season of increase. I command a common abundance. I command the fulfillment of a dream. The fulfillment of a future. The fulfillment of a destiny. I decree it now. I decree it now. I decree it now. Receive grace for your next level. Grace for your desired level. Grace for your next level. Grace. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take 30 seconds. Just thank him for that thing. Thank him. Lift your hands and thank him. Thank him for that thing you have seen. Thank him by faith. Just thank him. You have already seen it, so thank him. by faith. Thank you for that business, for that financial favor. Thank you for that open door. Thank you. Thank you. Now if you believe God serves your praise, please lift your hands one more time. Without a reservation, give him a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise right here. confuses the enemy. Do you understand? When you praise, there's something that happens even to you. He says, God has ordained strength in the lips of babes. King James. New King James, and he says, he has ordained praise. So praise is strength. Praise is strength. Sometimes if you want new energy, you praise him. If you feel tired, that's when you even release it. Then he says that he may confound the enemy. So there are enemies who are confused when you praise God. Can we give God just a 60 second crazy Shabbat? Is that possible? Please don't look around. I want you to be crazy when you're doing this and do it with understanding. One, two, three. Give him a shout. 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 Shout! 20 seconds! Give him a shout! Give him a shout! Give him a shout! Give him a shout! Hallelujah! Amen! Glory to God and so shall it be. If you believe it, shout a good amen. Before I can be able to do what I need to do, if you are here, you may have walked in here your first time, or probably invited, or you've been coming. Maybe you've never really given your life to Jesus or you're backslidden. Let me just be very sincere. There's nothing as beautiful as knowing Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. There's nothing as beautiful as that. If you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want restoration or I want to be born again today. Would you just lift up your hand? I'm willing to pray together with you. Anyone that is here that is not born again, lift up your hand. 
if you need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone, anyone. I'm waiting for you. Put the enemy to shame today.